Many thanks for watching. This is Breakfast Central on New Central. It's a new month. Yes, happy new month, the very first day of March. Now, breast cancer is a leading cancer diagnosis and second most common cause of cancer death in sub-Saharan Africa. Yet, there are few population level survival data from Africa and none on the survival differences by stage at diagnosis. Improving breast cancer survival in sub-Saharan Africa is urgently needed requiring early diagnosis and improve access to treatment. Now this morning, however, data on the types of and barriers to receiving breast cancer therapy in this region are pretty limited. Our guest today is Etel Olomu. She's a stage four breast cancer survivor, a cancer breast cancer advocate, and founder of Engrace Life Foundation that raises awareness campaigns and free screening for cancer patients. Thank you so much for joining us um, at Thank the ETEL. I mean, morning. it's it's been a journey for you. I can imagine stage four yes. breast cancer, and stage four is actually the last stage yes, for, last for a stage. lot of people, yes. the last stage of cancer. But can you tell us your journey through that difficult times and the treatment? I mean, uh, your your best, your biggest self discovery after you were diagnosed with with breast cancer. Good morning, Africa. My name is ETEL Olomu. I'm a stage four breast cancer survivor and also the founder of Engrace Life Foundation, a.k.a. Save a Breast. Uh, it all started in 2010, of course, then. Uh, I didn't uh, know anything about uh, breast cancer. I was in, like, breast health aware. There was no education about it. There was no enlightenment about it. And, of course, we made a lot of mistakes. And also wrong diagnosis was part of the problem that uh, brought us to all the uh, difficult situation we got into concerning breast cancer. I mean, I can clearly relate to breast cancer. My mom is a breast cancer survivor. She wow. had one of her breasts removed. I mean, my mom's younger sister died of breast cancer. My wow. mom's brother had prostrate um, breast cancer before he passed on. So breast cancer is something I'm quite familiar with. But what's that one thing you wish you knew? I mean, you wish you knew before you even started the treatment. What is the one thing you can, you wish people who are watching can, can get at the end of the day? Okay, one thing I wish I knew uh, uh, the, uh, before uh, the, during the diagnosis or whatever, is that if people were even uh, like now, of course now the situation is a bit different because there's a lot of a uh, enlightenment campaign. There are a lot of people talking about it. But 12 years ago, as I said, nobody was talking about about cancer. There was no education. There was no enlightenment. It was like a, a kind of secrecy, a taboo. People don't want to mention it. You know, like when you mention it, it's like something that is. Is don't even talk about it. Is is a plague. Is something. I wish I knew about breast cancer, like education. I was. I had knowledge about it. I wish I knew about breast health awareness. I wish I knew about breast general breast health education. Everything about breast care. I wish I knew about that. I wish I knew about lumps. I knew. I wish how to check for lumps and how to screen for lumps also. Mm. How to check and screen for lumps. Now, what's the most difficult part of the journey and how do you even overcome it? The most difficult part of the journey was, uh, you know, finding out that you, 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 your, your cancer hits you, breast cancer hits you, you're young, and also knowing that it's breast cancer with a lot of, uh, I, had, I, I went through a lot of stigma and also funding was a problem because and, uh, it was a very, very expensive treatment and also lack of medical professional personnel in that field because i always say in my interview i was used as an experiment i was used as a lab rat you know like it, they, they did a lot of trials and error in my case if not how do you explain going through uh, uh, uh four lumpectomy surgeries without even finding out what it was so that is the reason why engrace life foundation which was actually bettered out of survival and out of my personal pain we are making sure we are closing that gap by uh, informing people about breast cancer, telling them about breast health education, educating them, enlightening them, and also telling them that as a woman, you have to always uh, uh, check your breast. You have to always check for lump. And also, if you notice any abnormalities on your breast, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not uh, witchcraft, as we always say, because a lot of people tell me it as, oh, what happened to your breast? They've donated your breast to, uh, to the witchcraft coven. So, that is what Engrace Life is doing now, educating people, creating that enlightenment, you know, telling women that if you notice any abnormality on your breast, go to the hospital, check it out, and also teaching them how to check their breasts by themselves too, and also to know that early detection saves life. 
early detection does save life. I mean, I had a near or very close encounter in recent time. I mean, about three weeks ago where my child minder, one side of her breast was three times the size of the other. Lucky thing, I took her to the hospital for proper checkup and breast cancer was rolled out. Now let's talk about your foundation and uh, some of the milestones it has achieved in terms of um, supporting women suffering from breast cancer. You talked about stigmatization when you were going through your process. What has your foundation done to support women who are currently going through what you went through some 12 years ago? By the grace of God, you know, after surviving cancer and, you know, I was boxed up and uh, kept quiet about it for a very long time because of the stigma I went through. You know how people just say, oh, what did you do that God is punishing you this way? For you to have cancer, you must have done one thing or maybe you lived a bad lifestyle or st stuff like that. So, and Grace Life Foundation has come to, uh, to close that gap in telling people that you don't have to do anything. Even when doctor, people say, you know, you, you get cancer through a... Uh, uh, that some people is hereditary, yes or no, but that's like two or five percent of that because in my community, I'm the first. I didn't have anybody that had cancer. So, Engrace Life Foundation has come to close that gap and also tell women that if and when you're diagnosed of cancer, go and seek for treatment. Also, our foundation is educating women. Uh, uh, last, since last year, we've been going from uh, different communities. We've gone to Anambra State, we've gone to Bayasa, we've gone to River State, even in Lagos here, we are doing a whole lot of job. Uh, we've been going about educating people about cancer, screening them for last year alone, we screened almost 7,000 women for free. And wow. also helping, we have, we have almost 15 people who helped for treatment, you know, from doing lumpectomy to them and treating cancer, full treatment. When we mean treating cancer, not just paying for one chemo or, or helping you go and uh, uh, sit, uh, go to the hospital, we we'll help you with the full treatment from from your diagnosis to all your chemo sections so to mycectomy to radiotherapy and also aftercare because that's also a challenge in our country. Mm. People don't talk about after cancer after because that is where the problem is. A lot of people fall into depression. A lot of people because of the stigma they don't they are they don't they can't go back to their job. A lot of people after the cancer maybe they their arm they can't use their arm or something Always something happens. Basically so their lifestyle their changes. lifestyle their whole life is changes. is changed. So we as a foundation we've been able to bridge that gap. You know raising funds right. and also uh, during the free screening we don't do that alone. We've, uh, by the grace okay. of God we've partnered with a lot of uh, uh, other other. Uh, people like uh, the Medical Women Et Association, tell. the Women Journalists, FIDA, they've been there for us, you know, with well, all it, the... it's such a lot of yes. thing you're oh. doing. I mean, so we're down to the... are the doctors that helps us to do all those screenings. To do all of too. that. Such a laudable project you have. Uh, we're down to the last minute, but I know that people can follow you at Engrace Life Foundation on Instagram for more information yes, on your project. Dot and life. they engraced dot dot life. life that's on instagram yes, where they can follow instagram. you for more information but yes. thank you so much for doing what you do you're doing a selfless project and we wish you the very best thank you very much